let's get into the layout this is your sample browser you can set it to auto if it's an auto it uh, sort of makes up and down up and down so i just set it to snap so it stays put no matter what i do if you add some samples while you're in FL Studios, you can just click this and it will refresh the, the list. You don't have to exit and enter again. Uh, you can search your samples here, find smart, find some um, previous selected, blah, 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 not really useful stuff. This is your sample sequencer. You have a sample. Um, this is your 4x4 beat. You see there they are colored in different colors in the beats, so this makes it a whole lot easier to make patterns later on. Yeah, so that's it. Some useful shortcuts like a left, cl left click on a sample, fill each two steps, it fills each two steps, it fills each four steps, that's every beat, fill each uh, eight steps, that's every other beat. I insert here you can insert your VSTs and whatever but we'll talk about that in the next part this is your pattern um, sequencer basically what this does is uh, click on pattern 1 like right here and make a 4x4 beat and you paint with it and you paint four, uh, 4 squares you move on to pattern 2 you play nothing happens but see here pattern it says path song when it's set to pattern it plays only the pattern you, uh, you have selected in the pattern sequencer if it's set to song you see this little thing um, you see this little thing appears here and it plays the whole song uh, what this is good for is that you can make uh, different patterns let's say here you have 4x4 beat simple on pattern 1 you go on pattern pattern 2, you make every other bit, beat a clap, you add it down, select song, play, and it's now playing the two simultaneously. You can delete the first four, you can set it to play, it plays the first four that you are that you have painted on the sequence, when it goes here, it starts playing the clap, as you can hear. Okay, that's it. Up here you can also add samples like this if let's say you have an atmospheric uh, something atmospheric um, let's say this you can drag and drop as you said drag and drop and it automatically adds them to the audio clips. Down here you can sort your samples if you're com completely psychotic. You, le you left click, add filter gr group, uh, enter name of group, enter and now you have a different filter group. You can separate your kicks, claps um, or in general beats and atmospherics and vocals and blah de blah but I don't do that because I'm not a psychopath. Uh, but whatever makes you happy. Anyway, what this is good for is, um, to the most part, sequencing. Because uh, let's imagine we have this up here, and this this is your volume control of this sample. Let's go to pattern one. As you see, each sample has a volume control and a pan control. Pan left, right, left, um, uh, left speaker speaker right speaker and volume control of each sample which is really nice we go uh, if you add things here the, directly from the um, the sample browser uh, it goes automatically to audio clips and it automatically sounds a little bit uh, louder than it actually is I don't know why so yeah you need to lower the volume down a little and play <laughs> As you see, it goes, it doesn't revert back to the first when it reaches the end of this because this is a little more right. You see, um, here, maybe this is better. Basically, uh, let's get into the sample manipulation menu. When you click, double click here, you enter the sample manipulation menu. When you click on a sample here you enter into the sample into the sample manipulation menu so yeah let's go to this I double clicked on this here and I want to make it so it's here 
I can basically just do this but I want it to loop as it as uh, I want the whole thing to loop not just cut it because this cuts it then doesn't play it. basically I want to do is here time stretching you have pitch sound um, control you see this little dot here this is if it's turned on or, or turned, up, turned off if you press control hold control and click it enters into solo mode that means only this sample will be heard if you if you go back to unsort it you see these are all turned off okay let's play it. you see higher pitch let's play it again even higher pitch now this auto pro default pro transient transient tonal monophonic is uh, there are all different ways of uh, when you play with the pitch and these are knobs here basically every one of these sounds a little bit different there are different ways of manipul of the of fruity loops manipulating the wave monophonic sounds a little bit strange pro transient is the best uh, for atmospherics by my account tonal speech and so on you have to experiment with this to understand what they do but yeah basically when you press the third button on your mouse or your scroller if you have a scroller it automatically resets whatever or oh, to the default this to the default position whatever knob you have on under your cursor as you see here it resets I set it fast press button 3 resets anyway on to time stretch multiplicator basically what this does is shortens your loop as you see here I shorten it shorten it shorten it and yeah Bas basically what I want to do is slow slowly try to fit it to this if you hold control and drag it increments in smaller no increments <laughs> so hold control drag increments lower let's play oh I forgot control left click on the soloed sample it reverts back to everything is hard basically Okay, this is one. This is one of the um, techniques used. To, um, I use personally to sync uh, atmospherics to the song. There are there are others. I will show you them. Show them you into uh, in the next parts of the of these uh, little tutorials. Uh, let's get a little more into the sample. Uh, into the sample uh, sample manipulation menu. Uh, the clicking transient, transient not only basically what this, what this is is the bleeding effect bleeding um, actually actually this later it really doesn't make much sense now so basically here you have normalize it normalizes the wave with, which means if it's um, re really uh, loud on one end really quiet on the other it tries its best to normalize it so it sounds even reverse you can reverse as you see remove DC offset some samples have a really strange offset we'll, uh, we'll meet some of them I'll explain what, what it does reverse polarity basically it flips um, the wave uh, vertically fade stereo swap stereo swaps left and right and so on here we have in this basically uh, lowers the volume of the starting uh, the start the start of the um, wave as you see here Com continue to raise in continue to raise in and you see you have a little uh, nice volume mode effect alternatively you can raise out and it uh, lowers the ending of the wave so if we play it 
it quiets down as we go ahead. Pogo. This is exactly what it sounds like. It makes your sample sound like a pogo stick. Let's push it way left and see what happens. Let's make the let's make the sample this one here solo. Con uh, hold control, left click and play. You see that little pogo effect? Let's uh, push it way right. And let's uh, press the third mouse button or the scroller to reset it. Okay, this one, cross wave loop. Now, if you press this, it basically loops your sample. But if you have it on the pattern like this, and just leave it playing, it will loop forever and you don't want that in the most cases so um, actually this one can't loop because it's um, because it's up here but let, let's take another one let's say this we push the CRF, it says on the knob, way right. You can um, play melodies with your keyboard. I hope you know that. Right now I'm, play I'm playing with my keyboard. So let's hold, on, hold the note. You see, it loops. If you push it lay ba uh, way back and play it, you see what it sounds like when it's not looped. If you press here, uh, use loop points. If it's on, that means it's it will loop. If it's off, it will just loop once and end. But let's leave this on. Let's uh, right click on the sample. Go to piano roll. This is your basic piano roll. C5, C6, C4. This is a piano. C4 is uh, the re mi. Now this is the middle. Imagine a piano. This is the middle key. This is the mi. So this is the mid the fifth octave of uh, the piano. So this is re, this is do. I hope that's what uh, they're in English do re mi. Yes. So this is the do on the fifth octave. Go to C4 minus one. This one minus two. This one. This is the do on the four on the fourth octave. We go further down and further up, and yeah. But basically, in the beginning, I advise you to stay within uh, from C4 uh, to C6 because um, basically those three octaves will give you all the melody power you need in the beginning. So yeah, this uh, this things up here, the pen, you can just add one note at a time. If you if you use the brush, the brush you can just um, paint stuff and so on. This is actually how long the note will last, as you see. Let's switch the pattern here, up here. Space is a shortcut for play, by the way. You see, it cuts. Let's uh, shrink it way down. It just beeps. Let's make of uh, this. You see this uh, hard line, hard line. Uh, right here, this is the end of uh, one beat. Uh, that is four beats. Actually, this is one square. If we press, if we press this and press two on our keyboard, uh, we can stretch it uh, to uh, to the normal to the default uh, thing. Up here, you have controls to stretch it. Um, Stretch it in, stretch it out, stretch it in, stretch it out. 